Hello there and welcome to another video uh, regarding the Atlassian Cloud Changes. If you tuned in last week, you remember probably that the uh, notes were very small. Not a whole lot had been shipped last week. Uh, this week it's the opposite. We have a ton of new features that have rolled out. So I guess it's nothing more than just jumping in there and go through them. So let's jump over to the, the notes themselves. So here we are now with the Atlassian Cloud Changes nodes, and as usual, we will go through them one by one, and I will give you my opinions and my reactions to them as we see them. So let's just jump down to the first one, and the first one is stay up to date with new releases in product updates. So if you are watching your uh, your updates, not here in the, in the blog itself, but you're doing it in your product, then they are now sorting those release notes by date modified. So uh, you will now see, for example, when, when something has completed to roll out, that one will be at the very top of your list uh, to tell you that it has been completed. So now it will actually be your date modified, not like it was before when it was date created. The next item on our list is that Confluence guest roles will now count towards your access bill. And it's important that we see then that this change applies to individual managed account in the organization with the Confluence guest role. So it means that uh, anyone that you have in, uh, in your Confluence that are assigned now to a guest role to a page, they will now count towards your access bill. You can see here, we count any managed account with the Confluence guest role towards your Atlassian access bill. So that means that if they have now a managed account, so that they are registered within your organization, they will continue to count towards your Atlassian access bill. So this one is a little bit interesting. Uh, I'm not sure how it was counted before, because as far as I understand, any managed account that is in your access will always count towards your, your bill. Um, but apparently they made some change to this one, so I'm not really sure what this one means uh, or how this one has been changed. But just so you are aware that you will now see the, these uh, accounts will now be in your bill. Let's jump to the next one, and that one is the App Switcher. And this one uh, is a little bit interesting because we used to have in those nine little squares up in the left corner that when you switch between your different products you used to have it that it will you could see your products uh, in list so your, your software your service management and so on uh, and what they are doing now is that they are making a switch so uh, on the left side now you will actually see small squares that will represent your organization so for people that manages multiple organizations, uh, you can now see those uh, on the very left side. And then you can, once you click on an organization, then you have the regular view on the side there. And if you are uh, looking at your current setup, if you haven't received this switch yet, then you will see in, in that list, uh, when you click on the nine dots, you will see Atlassian Start. And that one is a link that you have up in the top uh, right corner and this one will now instead move under your apps and we're going to talk about Atlassian start a little bit in a different video uh, because I'm a little bit curious of how that one is actually being implemented and why we are now seeing these things that way because it goes takes you to Atlas uh, so uh, but that will come later so this one is actually kind of interesting. I don't know how many people that actually manages multiple organizations. Uh, if I had still been a consultant, that would be awesome. And now that I'm not a consultant, I sit on, on one product basically. Uh, I'm not really sure how useful that will be. But I'm assuming this one is for premium users rather than enterprise users. And premium users can have multiple premium products within an organization and each of them can then be their own organization in Jira. But uh, I have seen it, I have tested it, and I can't show you because it is on a, on a Jira instance that I cannot show anyone else. Uh, but it looks nice, um, and I like it. Uh, I think it's a good, good addition. Let's move on to your platform itself. 
and so they have improved accessibility. I haven't seen this one yet myself, but uh, apparently what they have done then is that they have included a statement at the top of the screen, and this is when you go to product settings and details. So you will see the icon for the project, and you will set the, the t who owns that project. Uh, and now they are adding a statement at the top that explains that some fields are required. And they are showing a legend for these required fields. And each field is also marked with a red asterisk telling you that it is uh, it's mandatory. I'm not really sure why this one was needed, um, but yeah, it's a change. Next one will then be that we have uh, another, I'm not really sure why this one was needed, uh, probably for people that uh, have some kind of uh, disability they can't use the mouse uh, or have problems using the mouse to reposition but it's that you now can move the statuses with your keyboard uh, so what you do in the new workflow editor and I think this one only works in the new workflow editor is that you can click then on uh, a status or the starting um, the little round uh, icon that, that tells you where the, where the workflow starts and then you press the key M and then you can use the arrow keys to actually reposition it a little bit. So that's also something that is um, kind of interesting why we are, if there was such a big need for that when we have critical bugs that uh, have been for months that probably should have been focused on instead. But it will always be interesting and it's always fun to play around with the arrow keys uh, when you want to move things. So on to the next one. Easier than ever to add people to Jira with Slack. Uh, so this is another one where we are now building closer to Slack. So rather than having the, uh, the notifications going out through email, you can now get it, or you will be forced to get it, uh, I think. By default, they will go notifications to Slack if you have that integration set up. So if you want to turn that one off, you actually need to go to site settings and connected apps and you need to revoke this uh, so it will go out through email instead. I'm not really sure why this one was wanted. I know that uh, a lot of uh, developers love working in Slack obviously um, but I don't think it was that much in the demand. It was very encumbersome to actually have them go through emails instead. But now it's here and you can use it. And if you are a very Slack heavy organization, you're probably gonna love it. So I think this is a good change, even though I think they could have focused on other things. Next one, and get better results by refining your search with more criteria. And I was a little bit confused about this one because what it says is that now you can, add, they've added support for more fields in search and as far as I've known, and maybe this is just for uh, for data center, but I was under the impression that many of these fields we were already in the search. Uh, so I'm a little bit confused of what this one actually means. But what they have done is that they now support fields like description, environment, epic name, atlas goals, atlas product, time and status, short, and custom fields of the type paragraph, short text, and read only. So. Uh, they will now apparently appear when you search for things. And the order, the way you do this is you go to your project sidebar and select issues, the, the one area where no one actually uses if you are in a, um, in a software project because you always have board set up. But if you go to issues and you click more plus somewhere, uh, then you can use these fields. So I'm a little bit confused of what this actually means, if they mean that before we could not search these, or if it's just that they can show now in the list view, uh, which I think they have always been able to. So very confused about this one. But, so if anyone have a good answer why what this one means, please add it in the comments. Next one is manage all your custom organization in your service management. So uh, rather than having to go into each project and click around and find all the organizations, we now have uh, a specific place 
and where you can actually see all the organizations. So what you do is you go to settings and products and your service management and there you can see all the organizations. And also here you can create and you can manage the organizations. Uh, but it's important to know that if you create them from this new uh, area, then you they are not added to any project. So you will still need to go into the product and add the organization there as usual. But it's nice to have uh, uh, a common place where you can actually see all the organizations. Next one, I really don't know what this one is. Uh, because they haven't really told me what, uh, or they haven't really written out what these things mean. But you will get work suggestion for critical vulnerabilities. And what a critical vulnerability is, has it's difficult to know. Because it can be, I assume it is if there's something wrong with your product. So, you know, if you have a configuration error, for example, then you will get that little pop-up in the, the right corner saying that there's a problem with this project. Um, but the critical vulnerability could be that there's a critical vulnerability in GR itself, or it can be that is a, uh, a bug with a criticality of some sort. Uh, I'm not really sure which one of these it is. I'm assuming it is when something is uh, misconfigured in your project. So apparently this one will now show up in your work suggestions panel. So if you go to your Jira board, and I'm assuming this one is both for Kanban and for Scrum boards, and you click on your avatar and then your work suggestion will open and then you will look for a critical vulnerability suggestion and select the card to view more information. So I have not been able to, to do this because most of my projects work um, and I don't know if that is even how this one will or this is what they will show. So if someone have any idea what this one is or what a critical vulnerability means in this case then please again sign off in the comments. Next one is about advanced roadmaps, and they have now officially called it plans, uh, which um, I'm not really fond of having generic uh, product names. Uh, it is very difficult. I have a problem enough talking about assets as it is, because assets is just a generic name, and people will think I'm talking about any kind of asset uh, in any other type of product. And I think we will have the same problem with just call it plans. Advanced roadmaps uh, was very specific, and if you added Jira for it or Atlassian, then people knew what product it was also. So I think this one will actually make people a little bit more confused than they already are. But now it's here. Now we have. Uh, it is no longer advanced roadmaps. It's no longer uh, portfolio. It is plans. So what they have done is clean up the language and the texts that you find and the reference to it. So uh, it is now officially called plans. Next up, we have automation recommendations on the board. Uh, so you can you can set up an, a rule now that automatically create an issue when a critical vulnerability is found. This is what we talked about before. Uh, so the automation recommendation will appear uh, when you uh, where you can action it. So any way where you can actually create uh, an automation, then you can actually see it. So if you go to automation menu and you select create a rule, and then you can see more templates, and then you can uh, choose this one. And this one will only be visible then if the product has vulnerabilities and there's no existing rule with the trigger when a critical vulnerability is found. So I guess this confirms that it is only within the project uh, when something is misconfigured. And this one you can only do when you're an admin. Uh, so uh, I'm not really sure how you use this one. You could, I guess, create a global automation and that will automatically create a ticket in your, if you're a GIA admin, you can have it so it show up in your project. Uh, so create a link ticket, basically. And then you can find all the projects where they have vulnerabilities or where they have misconfigurations. So I guess that is a good thing. Uh, but still, it's a strange thing to have. You have the pop-up that will show if there's misconfiguration. And if people ignore it, well, then they ignore it. Uh, so I'm guessing 
I'm guessing this one will also trigger a little bit depending on because it does not have any way to know if you already created a ticket for it or if, if the automation has already been triggered. So uh, yeah, we'll see about this one. I will try it out if I can find somewhere uh, some way to actually trigger a vulnerability. I guess I'll remove some request type or something like that and see if that one works. Next up is plans again. Uh, so this time they will filter dependency type on the dependency tab. Um, I have never had any use for this, to be honest. Uh, it tend to be one or maybe two different types of dependencies in most plans. But if you have a situation where you have a different, a la large number of types uh, in your dependencies, then I guess this could be useful. So next up is exporting your project timeline as a CSV file, and this is not plans. Then that this is the project timeline, uh, the uh, what should we call it, the light version that only works for one project, uh, so you cannot have multiple projects in it. Um, I've talked about this one before, and I really despise uh, the way they set up the timeline. Uh, but if you are using it, and then you can now, uh, above your timeline, you can select export, and then you can have uh, an export of it, and you can set between which times, basically, you want to export. So start date and end date, and it will automatically download a CSV. And this one can be useful if you want to, I don't know, put it into Excel, uh, or doing something magical with it, or export it to something else. Next up is company-managed projects and where you can quickly assign versions to issues in your backlog. And this one I actually like uh, because uh, it now means that you don't need to, to drag things over to the version panel and to assign them to a version. You can just right-click on it. And in the, um, in the contextual menu that shows up, you now have a new uh, selection that is called a version. And then you can just uh, select the one you want, and then you can assign it to uh, that ticket uh, or that issue. So this one I like. It's a quick and easy uh, quality of life change uh, that that will make things a little bit nicer, I think. It's a nice to have one. I don't think it's a, something that we really requested or really needed, but uh, it's a nice addition to have. Next up then is Atlas again, and we are going to make a video about Atlas again to see because uh, it has become something strange uh, since we've since I last reviewed it, since I last looked at it, and it's being pushed very hard now everywhere in here. So what they are doing now is you can add context to your goals in Atlas. So uh, in Atlas you can then link uh, to different work in in your plans. And you can integrate Atlas with your software premium, uh, so you can see their work ladders up to something much bigger. I'm not really convinced that this is something that uh, a lot of people want or need. Uh, I've seen that they are now pushing, for example, goals, uh, which I know a lot of people use and want. I'm not sure how that one fits within Atlas, uh, or how we can take advantage of it properly in, in Jira. But uh, that's a topic for another video. Right now they are making them coming together closer, uh, which is good if you like Atlas, and it's bad if you, like me, don't see any point of having Atlas yet. Next up, you can add custom field from team managed projects to issues in your plan, and I guess this is useful. Um, I think most of you know my position on team managed projects. I think it's uh, garbage, uh, or rather it is a nuisance. Uh, it's not garbage, it's very good for the people that actually wants to use it and they want to have control of their project. From an administrator point of view it is uh, horrible uh, and I tend to stay away from it as much as I can. Uh, but what you can do now, if you have a plan, and in the past you could not actually add the custom fields from the plan because they only exist in the plan in the in the project itself in the team managed project. But now they made it so you can actually add them, and that's going to open up a whole can of worms when it comes to managing your plan, because having a bunch of custom fields that only exist within one project and try to get that one to work together in a plan. I'm not looking forward to that one. 
But if you want it, it's now there. So you can go to plan settings and you can go custom fields, just like you would with company managed. And then you can add them as usual. Next up, and um, they are already breaking their own new uh, naming convention. They, they now write advanced roadmaps, new look for the confluence macro. So this done should be plans, new look for the confluence macro. Um, but what they are doing now is that they are changing. If you have imported or if you have added uh, advanced roadmaps or plans in the past in your confluence, they have now updated the macro. So now it will look a little bit better so you can get more functionality in it. And uh, for those of you who wants to present different plans in different areas of confluence, this is really good. And uh, so now you can work a little bit more with it in confluence directly. So you will get filters and you can see the warnings menu. And you can also do the toggle between timeline and list mode. And you can also change the view settings. So this is a, a quite a nice change for those of you who work a lot of confluence rather than in plans or you need to uh, show things from the plans in Confluence uh, for some reason. So it's a good change. Let's see, create issues from the board in company managed projects. Uh, so let's see, uh, you can create new issues directly from columns on your board. And this one is not really true uh, because this one have conditions. It only works in certain conditions. So it only works in Kanban, and it only works if you have the default workflow and the default board filter. So it means that have you done any customization, this one does not work for you. I think this is uh, it's a good start, uh, I guess. Uh, I still don't understand why you want to create them in different statuses, uh, why we have that functionality, but apparently that is something that Atlassian thinks is very important. Uh, so. You remember we have this functionality now that you can, when you create a new ticket, you can actually select a different status. Uh, so you can progress it in your workflow uh, if you want to. And this will be kind of the same thing. So you can create then a ticket in any column that you want. And I assume then if it's a multi-status column, you can choose which of the statuses it will be in. So uh, this is probably just basic functionality that they are adding now and it only works for the default settings in Kanban products and they will continue to build on this one build the functionality so hopefully later on uh, when it's ready we can actually create tickets just like we do in the backlog for example just click that little button at the end and we can have a similar functionality uh, in each column so you can just when you hover over the column it will show then create a ticket here So this one is, uh, it's interesting because we had this one uh, last week and it's also, um, it's also rolled out and they have announced this one. I even made a video for it uh, on how this one works. But they are now presenting it and I was, they probably missed it last week when they actually, the news actually broke about it. But what it does is that it will allow you to select multiple uh, issues in your backlog and then you can uh, bulk edit them directly in your backlog so you don't need to go to the filters uh, to do this anymore so if you want to watch this one i have a video for it and i will see if i can link it to this uh, video also so you can see how it looks but this is a really really good addition and this is something that uh, i find that i will use quite a lot So advanced roadmaps, this one was also out already uh, last week. Uh, I've used it uh, frequently in the past couple of weeks. Um, and again, advanced roadmaps should probably be uh, plans now then. But what you can do then is if you have the column for status, you can now uh, move them. And you don't need to, uh, you can change the status for it. And you don't need to go uh, like you had to in the past, you had to click on the issue and update the issue uh, status from, from the card there. Now you can do it directly in the list, uh, directly in your timeline if you want that. 
And this one is really, really good. And I that makes working in the plants much more engaging and it, you can get more value out from working in the plants. So I now find that I work more in the plants than I do in the boards, for example. So this is a really good change. So let's talk about your service management then. So, uh, so we have a, a new change then that is introducing customer notification logs for request related actions. We already have it for customer notifications, the regular ones. Uh, so this one now is for, let's see, undelivered customer notification triggered due to actions taken on requests. Uh, so you can now see the, the reason why these notifications did not trigger. So you will have uh, in your service project, you will have customer notification logs, and then you can select and request notifications where you can find details uh, about them, just like it could before. And this can be good if you want to troubleshoot uh, if someone tells you that I, I did not get notified about this and that and then you in the log there you can always see what kind of notification actually went out and then you can help the customer then to see if it's something wrong on their end like that it ended up in their in their spam folder or they have some kind of rule for it that will throw it out somewhere so this is a good change uh, and now we get more uh, logs for it so we can do better uh, troubleshooting for it Next up then is improved search result in your help center. Uh, so this one, I'm not really sure what they mean by help center, uh, but what you can do is you can link external resources. So for example, for us, we have links to our SharePoint, for example, where we have a lot of in information about uh, our platform and how we work with it. So what you do get in your service management, if you add the external links, it will show up on your portal at the end. So now it looks like they are uh, finding these links also, I guess. And so if you search for something, you, these external links can also show up in the result. Plus and Intelligence, uh, they now have some uh, functionality. Uh, so what you can do is, if you don't really know what you are, what you should create request types for, uh, you can now use uh, Atlassian Intelligence if you have it. Uh, then you can use that one to actually suggest uh, what kind of request type landing page you should have. So. Uh, I'm not really sure if there's a lot of people that don't know what kind of questions you want to answer uh, from your customers, but if you are having trouble and you don't know, if you're new to, to service management, for example, I guess this could be useful. So you can just uh, tell them, uh, tell the Atlassian Intelligence, this uh, is the kind of support I'm providing, what kind of request type should I have? So uh, yeah, I guess it can, it can have its use. Um, I don't think I will ever use it. Um, unless I, I move into an area where I have no idea what kind of questions will come up. Uh, but it's it's there and it's always nice to get more use of the Atlassian intelligence. Next up is forms, uh, where you can actually uh, manage them a little bit better. So in the issue view, you can now see the forms and you can uh, expand the form. So you can actually edit them directly when you're looking at the and uh, the, the issue view. Uh, and this one is really good because this way I don't need to jump between the forms and the issue view. And you can also have the ability to make them uh, internal. Uh, so now you have in the three dots there menu, you can now select this. This one will be uh, visible uh, publicly in the, in the portal or if you just want to have them internal. So this is also good, especially if you have um, multiple forms, you can now jump between them also. So all internal forms will be then displayed with a yellow tint uh, and it will follow the same pattern as internal comments. So it will be clearly visible to see if you have made a form internal. And this is good because there has been some situations where people have created forms and they have accidentally made them internal. And then people are wondering why can I not see this form when I, when I want to create a new ticket. So now you have a visual element to that one as well. So that is also really good. 
So let's talk here work management. Uh, so the first one is that you can now have faster direct imports from multiple sources here. So the first one is from Asana. And uh, so you can now uh, have, you can use the Asana importer. Uh, so that one will help you to migrate over uh, from your Asana products uh, into your work management. And you have a similar one with Trello, which is the next one. So that one has another importer than the Trello importer to make it faster also to, uh, to migrate from Trello to your work management. And this one also have forms, the same that we had up uh, in the last comment here. So it will work the same way for your work management. And uh, so it's just the same. So it's nice that they are being consistent now with having this one in multiple product types or different products. So product discovery, uh, improved accessibility for product settings details screen. This is one we already talked about, uh, where you can now have that little statement at the top to tell you what is mandatory. And each required field is being marked with a red asterisk. So it's the same as you have for GL software. Confluence then, we have a lot of new things happening for Confluence. So we have the dark mode uh, is now, uh, they are now removing the original theme. So the light theme will now replace the original one. Uh, so now you will have switched over completely to the new dark mode and light mode. Next up is email notifications. Uh, so they will now uh, support HIPAA compliant and I'm not really sure how that one works um, but it is somehow taking into consideration what could be sensitive data. Uh, so if you activate this one then you don't have to worry about getting uh, sensitive information in your emails. Uh, so in the email notifications you should no longer have anything that should be hidden according to HIPAA. So that is a good thing if you work in that area. Whiteboards, and you might have seen that last week we also talked about uh, the fact that whiteboards are now being limited, so you can only have three boards uh, per user unless you have the premium or the enterprise version. So if you want to check that one out, I'll add a link to that one also. But what they are doing now to compensate for this, I guess, uh, is that they now have the same share button functionality. And uh, so now you can not only copy the link, but you can also send it to individual people, groups and teams. And you can share it then on Slack directly from Confluence. So that's a good thing, because uh, uh, I know that people have wanting this functionality and they don't like to create a link, go to email and then send it to people. Now you can just do it to an entire group uh, or a team, which is awesome. Or you can send it to individual people directly from them, from the whiteboard itself. So next up is default spaces. And so you can automatically assign guests to this one. So if you have defined then a default space that if you are the space admin, and then you can make it so that users will automatically be assigned to that space. And site admins can assign 1000 guests at a time. And remember this is for guests, not for actual users. So if you have 1000 guests, uh, then you have a lot of guests. Uh, but you can assign 1000 at a time and you can manage their default space settings. Uh, if you go then to Confluence settings, global permissions and guest tabs, so then you can manage those. So 1000 is a lot of guests, but if you have a very large space or if you are a very large organization, then uh, you might want to do this multiple times then to can have them in batches of 1000. Next up, is then create new pages or GI issues using the create. So it's a new functionality in the slash command. So if you do a slash create, you will now also have the option to create the Jira macro. And uh, so you can directly uh, create a Jira uh, macro uh, with showing uh, individual items or list items. Uh, or you can create a confluence page, which will then take you to the uh, create. So it's basically a replacement from clicking that create button. 
Uh, so these are two things that I haven't tried out that much yet. Uh, so uh, we'll see how useful that one is. But I think when you are doing, uh, when you are working very closely with the with the Confluence page, it's nice that you don't have to shift focus and go to a create button or something like that, or uh, or you need to find that Jira macro. Uh, so now we can just type it and. I know that for me who types a lot and this one tends to be like muscle memory and to use the slash command. So I like this one and I'm not sure if it was really necessary, but it's a nice to have. Next one is a repeat then of what we talked about earlier. So you can now add people and you can now get them notified in Slack. And so nothing much more to say here. It's the same setup that they have in Jira. Let's see. The next part is about sidebar. Uh, so the sidebar in Confluence, uh, when you have a um, high zoom view, so when you, when you are zoomed in, uh, the uh, content could be uh, a little bit cramped. So what they have done now is that the sidebar now will, si will change size uh, to keep the controls in view. So uh, when you are also in a smaller view, the sidebar will no longer open on hover. Uh, so you know, we've all done that when we collapse the sidebar and we accidentally move our cursor over it and then it pops out and it annoys the crap out of you. So what they have now is that they, you need to click it, uh, that little button to actually have it open and closing. So this one only happens then when it's uh, smaller than 768 pixels, which means that for most users, uh, if you are working in full screen, this one will never happen. So this is for iPads, this is when you are working with multiple screens or multiple areas on your screen at the same time. Uh, so when you when you slide it over and it becomes smaller than 768 pixels, this will happen. More color choices when creating charts. Uh, I'm still not sure. Uh, I don't understand. As, as a designer myself, I don't understand the choice of having fixed colors. Um, but they have extended now, so instead of having the, what did we have before, 18 colors, now they are 36 colors, and I uh, think you could just as easily just have uh, a hex code, or or you can have that little color wheel, and you can easily extend this to 7 million colors if you wanted to. So it's just a matter of how do we handle that one in dark mode. Yeah, you had a 20 color palette, I see now. Uh, so it now goes to 36. Um, it's nice, but I still don't understand the design choice uh, to have fixed colors. Uh, if you do dark mode correctly, it should not be a problem. Bitbucket. Uh, not a whole lot of things for Bitbucket, but this is the product switcher that we talked about before. So the app switcher uh, get the same uh, redesign in Bitbucket as well. So you will get that little organization uh, icon row on the left side, uh, just like you do in Jira. Compass, the same. I will also get the app switcher. So this one is the new standard uh, for all products. So let's move over to Atlas in administration. So we can now manage auth, auth policy user guest users. That's a mouthful. So we talked about before that uh, all your uh, guest users would now be counted towards your access bill. And so sometimes you want to e export this and make sure that we have this somewhere. So in uh, in the Atlassian administration now, you can go to a specific area, so it's actually directly directory manage accounts, and then you can export those as CSV files. And you can also do the same thing then if you want to have it for the authentication policies. So you go to security, authentication policies, you select members, and then you can export members as a CSV file. Again, this is useful if you for some reason want to export this one to have it somewhere else. Uh, but other than that, it's just a new functionality uh, to export data into CSV. 
So that was it for this week's Atlassian Cloud Changes. And if you will like these, uh, please subscribe to the channel and I will get back to you with more Cloud Changes next week. So until then, have an awesome day and a great week.